Hey guys, third time's the charm. We're here in Boulder, Colorado. We went from outside to inside, and we're doing a long-term update on our two long-term trucks, the Nissan Frontier. Nathan? This is the 2017 Ram Power Wagon. And we put about 6,000 miles. Well, no, it has 6,000 miles. We put about 5,000 miles on this baby. So we've driven it a little bit, and we've got a lot more coming up. Yeah, you drove it to Moab and back twice, twice. Well, sort of. Yeah, yeah, and uh, you went on the launch of it. But let's start with the little Frontier yeah. because I, I like the fact that we've got two trucks that represent very different parts of actually a truck. So I like to say that this is everything you need and nothing you don't. So this is the cheapest truck you can buy in America, and I've got the Monroney in my back pocket, Nathan. Guess how much this bad boy costs if you were to buy one? Well, I, I know for a fact that it's between twenty and twenty-five, so I'm gonna say this one's twenty-five. No, twenty thousand seven hundred and fifty, with a starting price of eighteen thousand three hundred ninety. So we actually asked Nissan specifically for the cheapest truck they make, the S grade, uh, and they gave it to us. And the only options that we have on there are the uh, air conditioning and the radio, and basically Bluetooth and cruise control. That's it. That's right. Now, for those of you who are asking about a standard cab, they don't make a standard cab for this vehicle, so. This King Cab is the only way it comes, unless you want to go for the big one. Yeah, and you bring up a good point. King Cab, Nathan? King Cab? Shouldn't it be like like Peasant Cab? Because let me show you the issue. So we've had a couple issues with this truck. The first one is, of course, the fact that it is a King Cab. And that means that the uh, doors open up like a clamshell, giving you, well, very limited room on the, in on the inside. Let me show you what I mean. So here's a typical office box, and I'm gonna try to put it in the back of this truck. That's about all you fit back there. And uh, just for just for fun, I'm gonna try to sit in the back, Nathan. It'll be fun for me. All right, let me give that a shot. All right, I'm gonna sit in the back of this truck. Oh my gosh. <laughs> now I'm sitting behind myself, and um, yeah. This is about as much room as I have. So yeah, it's a king cab, but talk about a poorly named vehicle. Now, check it out over here. Let me show you the inside of the truck. We've got roll up windows. We have actually a really nice steering wheel with um, audio adjustments for the radio. We have cruise control, we have air conditioning, and that's it. There's nothing about this truck that is fancy or in any way premium. And you know what? That's what I love about it. And what I especially love about this truck is that right there. It's the five-speed manual transmission, which is paired to a 2.5-liter four-cylinder that puts out 152 horsepower and 171 pound-foot of torque. And let me show you that engine as soon as I can open it here. Uh, it's pretty much like the engine that's in a Altima, sort of, kind of. This is getting out. Behold, as a Dalmatian gives birth to a water buffalo. Because <laughs> you were really struggling to get out of there. Thank okay. God it wasn't me. You'd have to grease me up. <laughs> so let me show you this engine. It's a, it's a little four-cylinder, and uh, it's only, of course, uh, paired to a five-speed that drives the rear wheels, Nathan. You know that. <laughs> yeah, you do. Yeah, and what's cool about this engine is that no matter how much throttle you give it, you get, the the same same you get the same amount of speed. Yeah, you can floor it or you can kind of just, you know, give a quarter throttle, but you get the same amount of speed. There are some things that we found having the thing for a long time that I'm not a huge fan of. I'm going to show you guys the biggest issue right now, and that is this. That is, well, that's actually the issue. I can't open it. You need, you need to go around and either use a key or manually, hold on, I'll be right back. Let me show you something. You stay there, Tommy. Or manually open it. I wish it did have central locking because this gets really old really quick. I mean, it's not just lock and unlock it manually is uh, just a little bit tiresome. But the other bigger issue is because we've got this king cab with the clamshell doors, you really have to slam it because if you just close it, it doesn't close. See? Still didn't close. You really have to give it a good whack for it to close but besides that it's actually all the truck you need and a lot of stuff that you don't need it's the perfect ride height for me nathan you know i can get in and out of it easily i actually do like the uh, cloth seats they wear really well we spilled stuff on it because this has been kind of our shop truck for the uh, big green series uh, it does need lumber support it doesn't have that 
Well, are you, are you gonna be okay? I'm gonna be you okay. Little, little guy gonna be okay. But for eighteen thousand and uh, seven hundred thirty-five dollars, uh, actually twenty thousand seven hundred thirty-five dollars, it's yeah. a hell of a good truck. No issues with it. We put on almost four thousand miles. Uh, really, uh, just uh, you know, one of those trucks that I could drive every day, all year round, even in the winter. I know it's only two-wheel drive, but you know what? Throw some sandbags in there, and and some snow tires, snow maybe. tires, and. and and you'd be good to go. It's a it's a really strong truck. Well, we hauled with this thing. We already put um, an ATV in yeah, here. Yeah, we put, and we put some other there, stuff yeah. in there. And uh, it's a good hauling little truck. You know, the reason why a lot of companies, uh, auto ma manufacturers, uh, parts stores, and whatnot use these little trucks, they're inexpensive, and they are very reliable. And from what I know of this truck, those engines are easily capable of two hundred fifty thousand miles. So this is based on what I've actually researched. Now. Let's move up market. Yeah, before you go there, oh. I was going to give them the fuel economy. We're getting about 22, and the government says we're still getting 21, so we're actually getting a mile uh, MPG bigger. And I'm going to open the hood, and you tell them about this truck. Okay, okay. He's going to open the hood. The reason why is because it comes with its own butler. His name is Roman. Roman, open the hood. Check this out. It's a remote control. Roman, open the friggin' hood. <laughs> open the hood. Son of a... Come on. That's it. See? Chrysler products, sometimes they don't go quickly. But the point is, is that this vehicle has proven to be one of the best off-road trucks I've ever driven. It was a weird thing when we were going up against the um, Raptor, because the Raptor is technologically so advanced. But this thing, every day, will make you smile, except for gas. And we'll get to that in a minute. 6.4 liter Hemi, the biggest one they build. 410 horsepower, 429 pound-feet of torque going to six-speed automatic transmission, feeding all four wheels because it is, of course, four-wheel drive. You can lock the front, you can lock the rear. You can disconnect the sway bar. Oh, you can do so many things with this. And, of course, it has the switch, which will actually help get Roman out of trouble in his cute little pickup truck when he really does try to go in the snow and he gets stuck. How much is this bad boy, Nathan? $63,000. And there's one of my problems with it right there, and it's right here. Check this out, dude. Look at that. You've got a metal cable on a $63,000 truck. It is, of course, the only vehicle in North America that comes with a winch. Yes. But it would be nice if they actually put a synthetic uh, cable on uh, it. The synthetics? It. Yeah, that's for wimps. The, the thing is, is that this is actually a special cable. Normally, these things run out about, what, 120 feet? Yeah. This one's actually less, and that's because of weight, so they make it run out 90 feet. And because of that, they're able to eliminate a little bit of the weight of this particular winch. So I'm going to go with less cost. No. And as for the rest of the truck, I mean, it's over 7,000 pounds. I think recently when we waited, it was around 7,400 pounds. <laughs> That's a lot of weight. It's, a, it's basically like two and a half of those. And um, yeah, you feel it. You feel it because we've been averaging around 13 miles per gallon. That's, that's not great. Uh, it does have cylinder deactivation and it works seamlessly. It's actually a really good system, but there's so much truck here. And I mean, look how high it is off the ground. This is a stock vehicle. We haven't done anything to it. Yeah, let, let me show the inside. Yeah. All right, I'll, I'll go show the inside. And that's, what it, that's another thing. I'm going to be the, uh, the angel of uh, doom here sometimes. Why don't you go on the other side? Doom. There's nothing that doomy about this. Thing. This is an awesome truck. Here, here, here's the first issue right here. There's no step. Oh, no, this gets really, oh, that, that, gets, that gets really old. It's it really old after you have to do it like 15 it, times every no, time. No, it doesn't. It just improves your man. <laughs> Let me put it to you this way. I, I, I got my son. All right, he's um, he's not very tall. He's you know seven, and he has to muscle his way in here. I mean, you hear him grunt and groan. He sounds like well, Roman, and it's awesome because it's like, yeah, work, you little guy, get up in here. The thing is, is that yes, it's high off the ground. When you're serious about off-roading, you don't want steps. If you can avoid it, you want a really clear underside. Obviously, it affects your breakover angle. You don't want power steps, hell no. What you need is, frankly, nothing other than being a man and being able to jump in here. Jump, that's the thing, Roman. You gotta jump without hitting your, your monstrous head. And if you do it the right direction, if you kind of lean in, you can do it. I've, got, I've gotten used to it. You have to grab and pull yourself in. It's almost like getting a uh, toboggan going, you know what I mean? You gotta really pull yourself into it. But other than that, this is a very luxurious interior, as far as I'm concerned, heated seats. You can put six people in here. Check this out. There is an extra seat belt for another person, ta-da, which um, a lot of trucks actually don't do anymore. And another thing is that this is actually a proper 4x4 without pushing buttons and everything else. You actually have a lever to go 4 high, 4 low, which I love. And so far, off-road, this thing has been nearly unbeatable. Let me show you guys one of my favorite features of this thing right, right back here. It's the Ram Box, which is really nice because obviously with a pickup truck, 
you have no way to safely and securely store your stuff unless you put it in the actual cab of the truck. Here you could put tools, you could put a gun. A couple guns. A couple guns if you're hunting. You could High put, lift jack too will fit in here, one of the, some of the smaller ones. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's very handy. And here's the best part about it, Nathan. It actually it locks. locks. You lock with, with the remote control, just like that. Now your stuff is secure, or at least it's secure as it can be, given the fact that it's inside. Some people don't like the RAM box. I've actually run into a few who say, oh, you know what, that's not a, that you lose some bed space. You really don't lose that much space if you're putting a four by eight sheet of plywood in here. But yeah, you do lose space if you really want all of the extra pockets that are inside the bed. But with that being said, the type of person who's um, able to let use this vehicle, he's able to shoot me through that crack over there. Let me, let me show you something. Oh, funny. he's going to shoot. I got to show you something funny. Look at this. Come here. Show him this, Tommy. Look, look, look right there. <laughs> show him that. Get out and run. <laughs> that's in case. Now, now I know you're well, but see, that's Your son thing. is stuck in here. Well, my, my kid could fit in here. And um, we actually know a person who works, you know, in the press world. Her name is Jill, and she's tiny. She's, I think, four foot eleven and maybe ninety pounds soaking wet. Yeah. She's actually gotten into one of these. Yeah. 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 They actually put her in one. So, in theory, yes, you can put a human being in one of these. Uh, we got water in here. Yeah, we do. That's oh, you know what? I think they cleaned it. Yeah. 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 So anyway, uh, but there are uh, there are uh, plugs. I don't know if there's a plug down there though. Yeah, we have to uh, we have to get that out of there. Yeah. <laughs> we don't. Want we'll stop that out. But I like these little lights. They're pretty cool. Yeah. Yeah, so you can light up the little RAM box. There you yep. go. You got it. Yep. Yep. Nice. Yeah, there's some great details about this truck, and I've been driving it a lot. I've actually been stealing it from the rest of the guys and taking it home. And aside from the bad mileage, everything else about this truck is so much fun. We've been yeah. having some questions about reliability on this truck. So far, absolutely reliable. The only thing that had we, they had an issue with was the TPMS, the tire uh, pressure, pressure monitoring yeah. system. And we had a tire up front right that we had to replace because uh, Mr. Truck punctured it. So after it was replaced, the monitoring system had a little glitch. That was the tire, not the truck. They replaced it. Everything's cool. So other than that, this thing has been flawless and um, really reliable. And more importantly, it's it's got so much attitude and personality. I've been stopped by a lot of people who have been asking questions about this. Yeah, I mean, what they did was, let's face it, this is... Uh, a very minor yeah. revamp of the last truck. I mean, they put this kind of Simon and Simon sticker on the side. Uh, they also did. Can you come this way, can you come this way Tommy? The yeah. front is really where the the big yeah. changes are at. Yeah, they kind of it looks like they plastic dipped the front. It's not plastic dipped, but it's no, it's 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 like a bed liner. It's almost. like a bed liner that's much more sturdy up here. Uh, but in, in general, it's pretty much the same truck that uh, was out last time. Some rocks have bashed against it and have shown absolutely no wear. Are on those it tires loud? You know what? These tires are not as loud as I thought they would be. Now, once you get up to about 70, 75 miles per hour, there is a minor vibration we've been feeling in the steering wheel, and I think that's because of the tires. But uh, Andre and I drove this thing a thousand miles, and we both were remarking about how quiet it was and how stable it was. I don't think it's the tires. I think it's Kent. I think Kent took it out <laughs> along the prairie, bouncing it. He did, no, he's not an off-roader, though. He, he much prefers going long distance in big trucks. Can, Mr. Truck is not a huge fan of this truck. He's a medium fan of this truck. And I agree with him on one thing. He, it should tow more. But 10, that's because it's around 10,000 pounds as it's towing. And, um, you know, with this type of engine and the setup that it has, it should do 15. But, but with the soft suspension for off-roading, that's why it's like that. Is it comfortable on the highway? It is damn comfortable on the highway. The long wheelbase really does help for highway ride. Actually, you know what? This little guy over here, the Nissan's pretty comfortable too on the highway. It's it the really small does. Tire, the small tires, yeah. The long wheelbase makes it really comfortable. It's a little loud in the Nissan, but the the ride is actually rather nice. But yeah, in this truck, surprisingly, I didn't think it would be that nice. I think with the new tire combination, with the wheels and everything else that they've done. It's actually helped a little bit, and there is more sound deadening material in here over the, say, the past uh, 10 years since they've really had the uh, power wagon. And by the way, those tires, they put like 65 pounds of air in there, so when you go to air <laughs> down, unless you're at a very big air pump, it takes a long time. A long time, time, time to air up, and, and it's, yeah, once again, these are, these are heavy duty tires, so they uh, have a maximum PSI of 65. Right now, they're at about 60. Hey, here comes Andre, Nathan. What you got there, Andre? Uh, there's Andre. With hey, the book. I want to plug my book. Actually, Mr. Truck and I wrote this book, Truck Nuts, The Guide to Pickup Trucks. And all of the questions you guys have discussed, other than reliability, because we don't usually test reliability unless we have no the trucks for long term. Right. All the answers are in here. 
That's right. Roman and I even contributed a little tiny bit to it. Yep. It's a fun book. Enjoy it. Um, I highly recommend it, and it will answer almost every question you have about trucks. Yeah, we get a lot of questions, Andre. You guys send us a lot of questions about towing, about um, you know how to set up a trailer, how to set up a hitch, uh, what truck is best for you, and that's all in that book. So every time you guys send me a question, I usually send a link back to the book. We have a question yes. about the book. Ah. Yes. Uh, when does the second edition come out? Well, we actually uh, have improved... Uh, um, an improved version is coming out at the end of this month, uh, but it's not doesn't have new content. We just cleaned up some of the issues that we've had originally with the book, but now it's better than ever. And the second edition, well, we haven't started working on the second edition properly yet. But. I was thinking about a truck nuts calendar showing uh, Kent and Speedos and uh, Andre, you know, <laughs> posing with a volleyball under his arm. I don't know if that's. I don't know if that's the right Next to trucks. Next to trucks. Yeah. Yeah. We don't, don't want to get yelled at by having um, you know, other. You know, so yeah, you got. Well, I can't do it. Anyway, we uh, the book is as polished as it ever is, and it's on sale now. You can go to trucknutsbook.com and get it at Amazon and Barnes and & Noble and other stores. That's right. And let's, uh, let's wrap this up with a couple of just quick things. Do you have something to say? Yeah, I have a surprise outside. You know, oh. we, we have a, before you go surprise, you have to yes. go like, randomly draw. For all you Ford fans, uh, we have a Patreon campaign where you're helping to support the team. And so we're giving away hats, brand new hats. Uh, yeah. And this is a Ford. It's a hat. pretty nice looking hat. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Hold it stable so uh, Tommy can see it. It's a cool hat. And uh, one of our uh, big donor big supporters yeah. on Patreon is going to get this. So Andre, why don't you go and figure out who we're going to give this to. we got to answer some questions, I think. Yeah, we'll answer some questions and we'll and go why don't back. you show them Big Green? Yeah. A lot of people are asking about Big right. Green. Yeah. 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 It's patreon.com slash TFL car. Car, yeah. And we're giving away one of these hats every live show. Yep. As a thank you to our friends and supporters. So thank you guys. All righty. So let's, uh, let's go ahead and uh, see yeah. Big Green. Are there any questions, Tommy, questions? you want to answer? Uh, well, we've we go got um, Eric from Belgium wants a shout out. Oh, uh, Belgium. Far out. Hey. <laughs> Bonjour. <laughs> uh, um, we've got a lot of questions how this uh, power wagon compares to uh, the new Raptor. Well, if you guys, we have a great video. It's seriously one of the best videos we've done with trucks where we take these off-road in Moab, Utah, and we compare this to the Raptor and the Raptor to the Toyota TRD Pro Tacoma. And the reason why is because this is you know heavy duty, and then the next thing is half ton and then midsize. That's why. They're the best in each class. And that's the best way to see how it compares. Now, I will say this. Where this is really a hardcore off-roader in terms of boulders and rocks and everything else, the Ford is a little bit happier doing dunes and, and washboard and everything else. They're, they have different, um, different primary goals in terms of the way they were built. But if you watch the video, you'll see them actually performing off-road, and it's a great video. It's on TFL Truck. What's it called? The Moab Adventure? Yeah, it's called the Ultimate Off-Road Truck. There you go. Yeah. Yeah, we'll do a link to it eventually. Yes. Yeah, pull a link and you can watch that, or you can just go to TFL Truck and do a search for the Ultimate Off-Road Truck. Yeah, it's, it's seriously, it's one of, the, one of the hardest videos we had to make in terms of logistics and everything else, and I still think it's one of our best. Yeah, I mean, let's face it, this has all the off-road goodies, right? Disconnectable sway bars, yeah. uh, front and rear solid axles. Locking diffs. Locking diffs. So as, a, as a, just a pure off-roader, this is uh, more capable. Mm -hmm. But when you're talking about desert running or you're talking about, uh, like you said, washboards, the Raptor seems to do better. Oh, without a doubt. And it's one of the fastest trucks we've ever driven. Like, period. Yeah. It is, it's a sports car. We've got a, one more question about the Ram. Why did they change the grill? Well, this is... The that, Italian mustache. <laughs> it's the, I call it the catfish grill because of you know, the way the catfish thing goes. Now, they need to update their vehicles from time to time. And what they needed to do with this truck is they wanted it to be more contemporary. So this is a very similar grill, not the same, but a very similar grill to the one that's being used on the Rebel. And the Ram Rebel has been selling very well, and a lot of people like it. Although there are an awful lot of people who much prefer the crosshair br uh, grill, I kind of do. I do like the black. I'm just not a big fan of this particular thing or Ram being seriously longer than my arm. But um, the bottom line is this. Every once in a while, they have to refresh these things and upgrade these things in order to keep them in the market and keep people interested, and that's exactly what they did here. They also updated the headlights and the front bumper on this. And, and then, like the Ram Rebel, they put the power wagon on the side of the seat. And, and now for the question that everyone wants to know, do you think it should have a Cummins? Yes, oh. hell yeah. I think it should have a Cummins. I think, you know, I've, I, I, I've asked... Ram this a bunch of times, and they give you this litany of reasons why you can't have a Cummins. Well, the main one is weight. That's yeah, what they, they say. say it's too heavy. But you know what? This truck can be had. It's a heavyweight truck with the Cummins, so you, 
I suspect all the modding points are there. I think the real reason, and this is me just speculating, this is not what they say. I think the real reason is if you stick a Cummins in here, it's going to make it $10,000 more expensive. Yeah, that's part of it. A price is definitely an issue. I think it should. Do you want to spend eighty grand on this? That's one of the questions. The other one would be: um, I, I know that there are other uh, diesel power plants that are lighter, and personally speaking, if they can match the weight of this big six point four, then I think they should do it. But um, the bottom line, I think Roman is right. I think that it, price is a major issue when it comes to putting a diesel in this truck. Well, because look, the, the, what makes the Raptor so different from any other truck is that not only does it have the off-road bits, not only does it look different, this has all the off-road bits, this looks different, but more importantly, that 3.5, that 3.5 EcoBoost that's in there, the twin, twin turbo turbocharged, is different from the standard 3.5, yes. so it puts out more horsepower, it's a, it's a significantly different truck. Oh, it's a beast. Yeah, and this would be such a significantly different truck if it came with a Cummins. Yeah, um, I, I think they should do it. I think people, yeah, it could be a seventy, eighty thousand dollar truck. You're right, but I think people would buy it. Yeah, that's a big question. I mean, the bottom line is, do I want them to do it? Of course I do. I mean, it'd be great. Look, I, putting gas in this thing, spending about nearly a hundred bucks at the pump each time to fill it all the way up, and right great now point. gas is cheap. Yeah, that's painful. It's getting thirteen miles per gallon. That's an average. That isn't great. So yeah, it could do a lot better with a diesel power plant. All right, Andrew, who are we giving this uh, hat to? Hope you're a Ford fan. Come on in. <laughs> well, uh, there's a guy, Jim Fuller. Yep, Jim. And he's been supporting us for several months at right. ten dollars a month. Wow. And I think Jim, I picked your name out at random. I hope you like Ford hats. Yeah, I hope you're not a Ram or a Chevy or a <laughs> Nissan or a Toyota guy. And so there's a one in five chance you'll really <laughs> like that hat. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, dude. Come on, let's go uh, check out Big Green. Let's go get Big Green. Come <laughs> So we just, uh, me, Nathan and I just recently took Big Green up uh, Gold Mine Hill. And uh, let me turn around so you're not in the sun. Let me go this way. And uh, yeah, it didn't work. We had an issue with it. Basically, the truck died going up Gold Mine Hill. And we noticed that whenever it's in an incline, it becomes either flooded or starved for fuel. It's hard to say. Uh, so we have to figure out if it's the carburetor. And you know, Nathan, people are saying we should have taken Chevy's offer and put the LS in there. And the real reason, one of the real reasons, there's two reasons we didn't do that. Number one is because we want to keep the character of the truck and a 350 just slotted in. And number two, we just don't have the finances to actually be able to do uh, an LS engine swap. It's a lot more expensive, a yeah. lot more complicated. Yeah, you know, think about it, that this truck doesn't have the wiring in the first place to have that type of uh, power plant in here. We'd have to update all the wiring, all the electronics. In and order, the transmission. And the transmission in order to actually use that engine. This engine is kind of plug and play. We put it in, we're able to go almost immediately. That's why we, one of the reasons why we chose it. And you know, Roman, uh, he likes his toys and he didn't want to sit on his hands and let this thing actually get broken in, which is one of the issues I had with him. But yeah, so there's it's a, looking good though. There's that a video a up on TFL truck that shows us trying to go up Gold Mine Hill. There's definitely something going on with the carburetor we suspect or the fuel pickup. Uh, we'll we'll figure that out. You know, one of the options Nathan would be to do fuel injection. You can do a fuel injection. They have a throttle body system. Throttle body system, yeah, too. yeah, TBI. And there's works. been a lot on on the video. Yeah. a lot of people were suggesting different types of carburetors, and there's an awful lot of them that are good for off roading, and we will definitely look at those options. But once again, I mean, we're a small outfit and we can only afford so much, um, you know, I'm sure a lot of you guys who do this type of stuff at home would agree, you know, sometimes you have to take a little break and then figure it out and get it right the first time or else you're paying too much money and then if that's the case, we won't be able to pay Andre, he won't be able to eat, he'll have to go back to the bread lines. The point with this whole setup here is that we will eventually get it to the point to where we can go up anything with it, and yeah, I cannot yeah. wait. And right now, the next step is we have to put an exhaust system on because you really can't even really calibrate the carburetor without the exhaust because there's a huge exhaust leak that's happening. And so we're, we've ordered uh, a system, we're waiting for it to come, and as soon as we put on the exhaust system, then we'll deal with the carburetor. But first, it needs an exhaust system that's actually going all the way through. Yeah, right now we we just have it's Mickey Mouse. We have a bunch of pipes that are kind of connected together that sort of kind of is directing the exhaust out where it should be going but it's not a proper system not yet no no but the engine sounds great should I start it up for yeah, you? Fire it up. All right, I'll fire it up for you guys it sounds wonderful fire this bad boy up.
sounds like a race truck, dude. <laughs> that sounds like a race truck, doesn't it? Uh, I think we uh, set up some seismometers around here. People think this is an earthquake. Yeah. You know, eventually we're going to get it to a point to where it's going to sound rich, but not, um, you know, as loud as it is now. And we don't want to draw the attention of the police. The police department is literally across the street from our office. Yeah, the state, the state cops. State, state cops. Yeah. They've been looking at us and kind of like, oh, no wonder. So, yeah, we have to be careful about that. But the bottom line is once we get the exhaust on here, we're going to start really playing with it. And we're going to dial this in and we're going to have that carburetor correct. If we have to go to fuel injection, we will. But hopefully speaking, we may be able to get the everything right with the floats and everything else and get it down to where we can take this thing anywhere yeah because fuel injection is going to cost another thousand dollars right this is all oh, at least it's all money that that, that that you know has to come out of somewhere so we're kind of doing it piece by piece we have a a, a chrome bumper for the back that's going to be something that, that's going to get on there so we're going to work on the look of it uh, i want to reupholster the seat on the inside because it's all torn up that's something else i'd like to redo the suspension because this is kind of just a basic lift and it'd be nice to have actually a lift that where i don't bounce around like i'm you know in a uh, hippity hop, right? I'm in a trampoline driving down the road. So yeah, there's a lot more that, that needs to get done that will get done, but it's going to take a while. And you know, we're doing, every time we do something, we're doing a video. I would love to Nathan do like a video where we show, for instance, the truck being done from start to, to the end, right? Yeah. But because of the way that we're financed, that's hard to do too. So the more videos, the more money we make, and then you can put more money into the truck. Really, everything that, that, that we get goes back into the either the video production or the truck. It's not about uh, you know, it's not about getting rich. It's about uh, doing the best videos that we can. Yeah. Now, eventually, we, we've been talking about taking the uh, Porsche engine and shoving it into Tommy's <laughs> high boy, which which would make him so happy. So uh, that's that's another project maybe down the line. Hey, are there any questions? Um, just a lot of comments. People suggesting what we do. Um, David wants to know, Big Green or the Bronco? You know, uh, I'm not the only one to say this. I know Tommy behind the camera probably agrees with me. I really liked that Bron Bronco. It started to really grow on me, so I kind of miss it. So I'm going to choose the Bronco. It's a funny thing because I love Big Green, but uh, that Bronco would have been awesome. I'm going to go with Big Green because it runs and dries. <laughs> that sounds away. awesome. <laughs> yeah, and it's, it's getting... You know, it's up to date and we're actually being able to use it. That thing was uh, a long way from being an everyday driver. Well, guys, I think uh, I want to thank you for joining me and Nathan and, of course, Andre and Tommy behind the camera. Uh, every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, we're going to try to do a live video at 10 o'clock today. We had some technical difficulties, but we'll get better at this. We're working on the sound, we're working on the lighting, and we're trying to make this as good as, and as professional as possible. As always, this is Roman. And Nathan, remember, 10 o'clock Mountain Standard Time, Monday, Wednesday, Friday. See you guys next time, and remember, check out tfltruck.com for more news, views, and of course, real-world reviews. Andre, what's the next video we're putting up tomorrow? It's going to be a brand new 2017 F-250 Super Duty, MPG loop, and a 0-60, to so stay tuned tomorrow on the TFL Truck Channel. See you guys. Ciao. Bye.